everyone, on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, welcome to Mindalia live streaming. Today, I have the great honor of presenting, of bringing to your to this screen, Marilyn Rosner. She is a Canadian psychic considered as the best medium in the world, and she is joined today by Mikel Lizarralde. As many of you know, Mikel is part of our family. He's with us, you know, he's been with us many, many times. Mikel is a natural intuitive, ordained interfaith minister, doctor in philosophy and therapeutic counseling. He's a speaker and a published author. We're going to be having a very interesting conversation. This space, in fact, has been called My Life Among Spirits. Before starting with them, I just want to remind you that Mendalia's mission is to share information that can help raise the level of consciousness in the planet. And that you can collaborate with us just by liking our content, leaving us a positive comment. You can share this information with someone that you think that may benefit what we're gonna be talking today. I'm not gonna delay this any further. Um, it is with great pleasure that I say welcome, Mikel, and welcome, Marilyn, who want to be the first in my screen today, who wants to be the first person that asks my questions. <laughs> okay, Marilyn, Mikel has assigned you as the first interview. My life among spirits. Um, I think that we may be very uh, wrong. There may be many misconceptions about what uh, the spirit world is. We are not educated about everything that is beyond what our eyes can see. And what can you tell us about the invisible, Marilyn? Well, first of all, I want to say that it's an honor to have the opportunity to share some ideas with Mendalia because I have known Mendalia for many, many years. And in fact, I've had the privilege of working with them in different conferences for the last 10, 15 years. Well, my life with spirits, let me tell you, I want to share a little bit what it's like to be a medium, to live with spirits, to know spirits. <clears throat> and before I do that, I must ask all your listeners, what do you know about life after death? And that is really what the question is. Because when we speak about spirits, we have to speak about life after death. And by understanding the spirit world, it helps us overcome the fear of death. Um, death has been the greatest mystery from the beginning of time. But the good news is, is that for the last many, many years, there are many scientists, psychiatrists, and people from different traditions who are trying to understand life after death. And that is why there is such an emphasis now on near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences. My husband, who was called back to heaven, he was an Anglican priest, um, an abbot, really, of a community as well. And um, we met, and I come from a very religious Jewish background. And I was brought up to know about life after death because from the age of six, I always saw into the spirit world. I used to describe the loved ones and my family, they were very loving, innocent people. And they did what good Jewish people would do. They took me to a rabbi. And this rabbi said, she has a gift, listen to her. But let me tell all the listeners, it was very special to my family because, you see, I come from a Holocaust family. And so when I described many of these spirits, it brought to them the realization that those people who were murdered in the Holocaust, that they were really alive. But really, since I'm six years old, I have always talked to spirits. And I don't know what it's like not to talk to spirits. But I became very interested in children, uh, children who are different. And so I studied and have worked in, in, as an educator in psychiatry for many, many years. When I look at anybody, it's just having some other information. I'll just put it that way. But the important thing is to know that there is no death. And those spirits have a message. And their message is very clear. 
We are not dead. We want you to know that we are alive and that in our world, there are spirit schools, spirit laboratories, etc. And one thing I'm sure of is because we have moved into the fifth level of consciousness, that the veil between this world and the other world is becoming thinner and thinner and thinner. And pretty soon, almost everybody will be able to get messages from the other world because we're not separated by any big wall. The spirits are not up or down. As St. Pope John Paul II said, and there was a, a paper from Vatican, heaven and hell are not places they are just states of consciousness. And when we understand how the spirit world works, we know that we can communicate and that they want to help us, especially at this time, they want to help us. Now, everybody is, but first of all, I just want to tell you, I know Mikael for 17 years. My husband, Father John and I, we have had thousands of students. From the moment I met Mikael, of course, he was very gifted, but Mikael, became our nephew. For us, he's like part of our soul. For me, he's part of my soul. But beyond that, of all the thousands of people that I have trained, really the one that became what we call, Father John used to call him, our five-star medium. He was a super, superstar. And I don't know anybody, because he was very young when we met him, who de devoted so many years of his life. But I want to say that spirit, brings us a message. And now we talk about COVID. I don't know, I mean, I'm sure you have it there. Uh, here, we are in red alert. So we're locked in, locked out, locked down. So what is the message? The message is clear. Look, it says, in French, because our first language is French, it says, everything is going to be all right. But let's go beyond everything is going to be all right. What is this message? The message is, close your mouth. Don't talk unnecessarily. Go within, meditate, pray, and learn the truth about life after death. So when we don't talk so much, complain so much, worry so much, and we go within, we can learn how to awaken these gifts. And by the way, I want to say, as Mikhail would tell you as uh, the most outstanding medium uh, in, from my perspective in Spain and, and really one of the only proof of survival mediums that I know in Spain. But more than that, he is able to do what the spirit world wants him to do and he's given his life to that. And so people like myself, Mikel, we're here to encourage people, get over the fear of death. One day you're going to die, I'm going to die, Mikel's going to die. My husband went, but the truth is there is no death. And so living with spirit gives us the opportunity to feel that presence. You know, every morning when I wake up, I say to my husband, hi, dad, and please come with me. And sometimes I feel Father John's presence so strongly that believe it or not, I even go into the shops and I think I'm going to buy him something. And at the last minute, I hear him say, I don't need that. I have, my, I have a spirit coat. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that living with spirit gives us an opportunity to know there is no death, gives us an opportunity to help people overcome the fear, gives us the opportunity to tell people do not commit suicide. Also, aborted children live in the other world. Suicide victims live in the other world. Murderers live in the other world. But in the other world, we have to learn how to go to the light. So spirit says, don't do assisted suicide to die. Wait until the time when it's your time to die. Because when we came to earth, we came with a contract. And when that contract is over, we will take our steps. You know, I'm a very devoted to to Shivananda practicing yogi. And in yoga, we say, we come to earth with a certain number of steps. When those steps are over, we are going to go. And so people, do not be afraid of COVID-19, 20, whatever it is. Follow 
your heart, follow your soul, go within and learn who you are. Who are you? We have come to earth to love. We have come to earth to know there is only one race, the race of humankind. And spirit tells us the truth is one. The paths are many. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And so whatever the fear of, that people have, I am sure that there is a bright light at the end of the tunnel. And as we say in French, it's going to be all right. And we have to know it is going to be all right. So because I know spirit, I know it's going to be all right. So that's what it's like for me to live with spirit. Thank you, Marilyn, for those beautiful words and such encouraging words. And, and I agree with you with everything. I don't know what else can I say after all that wisdom and, and all those beautiful words. The truth is that there is a need for spirituality. There is a need to know a spirit. And there's also a need to go within. And more and more people are asking for help. And more and more people are saying, hey, I don't like this establishment. I don't like this way the, the governments work. Not this government or that other government, but all the governments in the world or this company or that company. And they want to be empowered, but truly we cannot empower ourselves if we only look outside. We need to learn how to go within, and and I think that that is one of the key, uh, one of the keys that we're missing in this world. That we are taught how to drive, we are taught how to study, we are taught how to be a good wife, a good husband, a good citizen. We are even taught how to give birth, but we are not taught how to die. And I think this is a very important thing that it should even be taught in schools or some other organizations should teach it, you know. I, I see that a lot of people are afraid that they, they're not sure what's going to be after they die, if there's going to be anything at all, if they're going to find their loved ones, if they're going to find heaven. Or some people think, you know, that they're going to find St. Peter or they're going to find... I don't know, flying angels. And when they don't, then they hold on. They hold back because they are afraid of letting go. They are afraid of, of, of encountering themselves and finding themselves with their own issues and their own needs. And I think that is one of the very first things that we need to learn, to look at ourselves in the mirror and to look at ourselves in the mirror and to go beyond that, to go their external part of ourselves and to really understand who who we are we are not a body we are not like marilyn says you know i am Sachitananda, bliss absolute you know and when i understand that it, it really empowers you and when you know that what you do is is where you're going to be encountering after uh, you die and who you do right or wrong, you're going to be encountered with those people and they're going to be there for you and they're going to be there with you. And no one, no one really dies alone and no one is really born alone. We all come with like, like an entourage, you know, that they're there with us, that they accompany us. So when people say uh, that the spirits attack you and the spirits are chasing you and the spirits want you to do crazy things, there's uh, often uh, other issues that need to be that are uh, lying there underneath, you know. That is truly not 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 spirit, um, and it's really about like Marilyn was saying, a state of consciousness. So we really can tap into that state of consciousness, and we can learn how to tap into that state of consciousness. And once we are there. Once we sit, like we call, in the power, once we achieve that state of consciousness, there's no veil, there's no separation, there's all one, everything is one. I don't know if you agree, I hope you agree with me, Marilyn, but there's truly a need, there's truly a hunger. You know, people are hungry for spirituality, but often their, their approach is not appropriate, and we need more education on life after life, and how to die, how to live, you know, and how to face that other face in their life. Thank you, Mikhail, for mentioning that, because the whole study of life, of learning how to die, thanatology, I mean, that was studied years ago by mm. the great mystics. 
But more and more, when people are getting ready to make their transition, certainly here in many of the palliative care units, I've worked with many people working with dying people, they have been trained. And here in our palliative care units, there is training for people who are going to work with people who are dying to help them overcome. And so important, as you said, Mikkel, no one dies alone. I love that with the entourage. And no one is born alone. And so there are certain things that we can do when someone is dying. You know, we have so many people. <laughs> well, she got a, an incoming call, I think, mm -hmm. and maybe it was Spirit that wanted to say <laughs> something to Marilyn. Yes, but truly, no problem Mirna, with that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Mirna, we really can see and we really have to realize that there's no barriers, that there's no separation. It's not like I often see in books or in, in different illustrations that we are there and they are there and then here are the okay, lost oh, souls. Here the I lost souls. you. I We're lost you. We're all one. We're all together. Yeah. And it's like this is an intercommunicated uh, sphere, you know, where we all uh, share the same space and you can learn how to tap into that. And I think the great awakening of, of the new age is spirituality and life after life. And a lot of people wanting to be at least willing to learn about that. But often how they, 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 they come close to that, how they find that truth is not proper. And they, they can, um, let's say they can, sometimes project their fear so they can, let's say, be dominated by uh, uh, untruthful uh, beliefs. And that is something also we need to take into account. There is something there, there, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> Marilyn, no, please continue. No. I would say very much, you know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, I knew her very well. She used to come to our conferences and she used to sit in our spirit circles with my husband and myself, and she talked about our spirit guides. And it's so important to understand these spirit guides. It's so important to realize that they are around us. They cannot live our life, but they will help us. And especially during all these things that are going on, this country, that country, this violence, one thing is for sure. If everybody would see into the spirit world, for even two minutes, that person would not be able to cheat, to kill, to commit suicide, to do anything like that. And so spirit always tells me that one of the real answers is for people to understand the other world. Because when we understand the other world, there's, we're not going to do a suicide. We're not going to hurt, as Mikhail said, because we come face to face with, with those people. I wanted to, to take the chance to ask you both this. Uh, we talked earlier about heaven and hell being states of consciousness, being our own realization of, of life and how we live on a day-to-day -day basis. And my question is, uh, from your perspective, from your experience, what are these practices, what are these lifestyles that could have us living one or the other? Well, in the heaven world, there are many levels of consciousness just like we have different chakras different energy centers we also have different levels in the other world and there are seven chakras seven basic bodies that we have because we are spirit and we live in this body and we have a mind but we have different bodies and we can learn how to communicate with the different levels. So in other words, there are different levels of consciousness. And when we talk about heaven and hell, there are people who are lost, murderers, drug addicts who don't know who they are. But one day, they too will stand in front of that divine light. Yeah, that is something that is very important to really a stress and really underline, you know, that we can, we will ultimately all arrive into the light, that we are all, you know, the, the um, I was going to say ready, but we're all um, um, 
uh, worthy, that's the word, of the divine pardoning. And we will all get that, and we will all get into the light. So it's not, like Marilyn said, two different things. We're all one. You know, the spirits are not there to hurt you, and the spirits are not there to see you cry, or to, like some people tell me, you know, to avoid you from being happy and from, to help you from, sorry, from uh, to help you uh, do something wrong to somebody else. No, they can always guide us and help us, but they cannot make you do things. And, right. and that little whispering in your ear and that little feeling and that subtle emotion and that hunch that you often feel or th that thing that you think it's imagination, you know, that can be a spirit guided messages, a spirit drawn messages. And but how can we learn to tap into that world, you know, having a more holistic and more um, full, um, fulfilled life, you know, and of course, meditation, prayer, uh, you know, and being a good human being. Of course, we have our days, and because we live on an earthly plane, sometimes we get upset or we get moody, but you learn to become the observer of that situation and not give into that situation. And also I want to say that when we are in that state, there is a certain brainwave frequency. Hmm. So we're talking about learning how to consciously go into altered states of consciousness. And what is so amazing is how we are built, how we have come to this earth, is that we can actually measure every night when we go to sleep, we go from one level of consciousness into another level of consciousness. And there is always a physiological response that we feel when we are making, getting ready to make that particular contact. And because we go from the very level, active level, beta, right down to deep uh, delta, to delta, deep sleep, because we go from one state to another, when we go to sleep, when we wake up, we can learn to be in that alpha state, that state of creativity, that state of intuition. And by the way, when we're in that state, it's not only to communicate with spirit, it's to know how to make right decisions. It's to know not to go in and out of this relationship, that relationship, this guru, that guru, this career, that career. Yeah. We are more likely to make correct decisions yeah. if we can go into that state. And I want to say also, Marilyn, that many of the great inventions of the world were given by spirit to people like Absolutely. Einstein or Graham Bell or some of the people we may not know about directly from the spirit realm because they were in that state and, and to help the, hum, the human race advance, you know? So I, I learned everything from dear Dr. Mellon and her husband, Father John, who now lives in heaven. And I, and I knew I had a gift and I did a lot of tarot, a lot of uh, clairvoyance, but I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know how to tap into that. And I remember Marilyn used to tell me, you know, use what you know, use what you already use and ask, ask the spirit to give you what you already have. And also, and I learned how to use that. And I was like kind of having a two-way conversation with spirit. And when you ask them things, they will comply. They will try to use that. They will try to fit into what you're asking them to do. Of course, nothing ever harmful or hurtful. But and at first, and pranayama also, I learned also breathing techniques and that helps raise the vibration. And at first it was an effort I had to make. At first it was difficult. I had to sit down in, a, in such a posture and I had to dedicate so much time. And I had, it was, it didn't come natural to me, but as, as, I, as I did it over and over, over time, it became almost automatic. So you right. see, it's like a language or it's like any other gift. You learn, and of course, it can get rusty as well, but the spirit never really leaves your side. 
Right. Spirit is always there for you, and you have to claim. You have to ask for them to to come and, and communicate and have a true. I like that Mikael. I like that Mikael says it can get a little rusty, but yeah. we can we can shine yeah. it up. But yeah. listen, people, Mikael and everyone who is trained here will tell you, you cannot buy mediumship. You cannot no. buy healing. No one can bang you on the head to become a healer. No one can. You know, nowadays I heard. In, in Canada, too, people pay $10,000 and they become a master. You imagine oh this? God. And they get a paper, a paper that says, you're a master, you're an avatar. Spirit mediumship wow. cannot be bought. It cannot be sold. These are natural gifts. And all we have to do is open up our heart, open up our being, and be willing to listen, to see, and to know, because the messages are all around us, and the spirits are not there to, to hurt us. You know, no. people will tell things like, the spirits are going to attach, and they're going to do this to you. That's not true at all. It's a beautiful, it, it, it's something so beautiful in life, when we know that our loved ones are alive, you know, when... My husband made his transition. He took four breaths, and that was the way he went. Of course, Mikel was with me when he came, when after he made his transition. And it was an amazing thing. Let me tell you, while we, and Mikel was there, while we were in the cemetery, and all of a sudden, there were two eagles. And the two eagles were above, and then one eagle came right down, and one eagle went away. Now, the sign of my husband's institute, the sign, I guess you can't, maybe the you logo, can see it. Yeah, the logo. Look, you can see it here. Look, 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 look. Is the sign of the eagle. Now, isn't that amazing? So when he went. That was a clear message. That was a that was clear, a clear manifestation. Message. Yeah. Don't worry that I'm I'm going to be with you, but I'm also going to the other world. And we all are given these beautiful messages. Yeah. So my, my prayer for everybody is learn about life after death. Learn about the beautiful gifts that you came to earth with. Learn how to awaken to these gifts. And above all, help people know that there is no death. I wanted to take a quick chance to to ask you something. I'm very humbled uh, with you know all your experience and all your knowledge, but as I hear you, I want. I don't hear. Do you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? How about you? I don't hear her. How about you, Mikhail? Do you hear me? Yeah, I'm fine. I can hear you. Uh, um, clearly. How about now, Marilyn? Can you hear us? Well, I'm going to start asking you the question. No. Okay? And when we bring her in. No, I don't hear you, know, you. You still don't hear me? How about? Uh, now I hear you. Now I hear. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, my question was actually if, um, if we could be maybe in contact with the spirit world, if we could be receiving messages. And due to the lack of knowledge, a lack of education on that field, we just ignore. Of the course. Science. Of course. All the time. All the time. Or the messages can be misunderstood, but more often than not, people think you know they're they're making it up. It's just their memories. It's just their imagination, uh, and and it's so subtle that, that the brain, the reasoning is very loud, but your intuition is is, is very subtle. A spirit can be subtle, but it can be really loud too. We've seen that. We've witnessed that. Um, but a lot of people, because they're afraid, because they don't know how to interpret that, because they, 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 their lack of knowledge, like you said, lack of education. That's why I think it's so important to get people educated in this field, but without fear and, and without um, uh, untruthful, you know, um, dogmas or stigmas. You know, even I myself, when, before I met Marilyn, I was having so many encounters and I, I was aware of a little tiny bit of what was happening around me and in my life. But thanks to she and her husband, I was able to identify a spirit and I was able to uh, establish a sound connection, you know? 
let's uh, let's start bringing questions from the people that are watching us right now. Yes. Yes, and I'm going to ask you, Marilyn, if you could put your camera a little bit lower, and oh. so we can see you. And we can see your glasses. Oh, that is that better? Amazing. Yes, that's perfect. Oh, that's and the first question that we have here is from Raul Cascol, and he's saying, "I really like you both, and would like to know how the universe keeps me away from knowing any of my grandparents or knowing anything about my grandparents." Oh no, the universe doesn't keep you aware, away, away, keep you away from it at all. You just haven't learned. It's like mediumship. It's like turning a key. And once that key is turned, then it's like the world is open to us. So maybe the person you haven't learned yet how to do that. And what I always teach and Father John did too, to learn how to work with brainwave frequencies and to know our physiological reaction to know when we're in that state and wherever that person is perhaps one day we'll have a chance to meet or but there are many good techniques and there's also certain kinds of music that can help us go into that state as well music which brings together the left and the right side of the brain and by the way learning mediumship is not only for spirit communication it is also to give us peace of mind to get over this idea of being so stressed to get over the idea of being afraid mm -hmm. yeah i agree completely it? with marilyn it's not the universe that is keeping you away from knowing your grandparents that your grandparents are there um uh, I'm probably the universe is giving you hints on how to communicate with your grandparents, but you haven't learned how to do that yet. Call upon them, invite them, tell them to show themselves up to you in a way that you will understand. Create a space, create a time, set up a schedule, and then honor all that and create a habit. And you'll see, you will get manifestations. You will get to know them. Thank you for that question. Tania Vargas, she is writing through the Facebook, I'm sorry, through the YouTube chat. Hi guys, I feel blessed for watching you now. Might you give me any messages from my beloved gone ones? I am Tania Vargas and my birthday is August 25th, 1978. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. How about- You wanna say, you wanna answer that Marilyn before or I go before? Well, you can do that when you Okay, Tanya, it's, it's rather difficult for me because I don't have you and I don't have your voice or anything, but as I'm very much in touch with your vibration, I feel a strong presence of a man who comes as a father to you, a strong father vibration, and I see beside him a much taller man, and then this man has something like a scar or has like... like um, how you say that? Like like little scars, you know, like like almost like marks in his face. And I feel a lot of suffering and a lot of anguish from this other tall man. And they're both together. They're both, they're very close to you. And I'm getting also like the, the two two and a half years ago, like 2017, 2018, must have been quite a difficult time for you. And the spirit is saying that you do have the ability to see, sense, feel spirit, but that there has been some um, external issues going on in your life, especially in the last two, two and a half years that have prevented you from that. And also I feel that as we enter next April, next May, 2021, things will get better for you. Thank you for that for that answer. And Augusto Vidal, he is writing also from the YouTube chat. I would really appreciate if you could receive a message or if I could receive a message, I'm sorry, from my daughter that passed away last year. Her name is Gabriela and she was 26 years old. Oh, how lovely. Can I ask, get the name of the person who's asking the question? His name is Augusto Vidal. Augusto, okay. <clears throat> Augusto, as I come in touch with your vibration, I feel very much now connected to the spirit of your daughter. She would have had a difficulty with the stomach condition, but also she says that two or three years before she made her transition, she knew 
that she would not be on the earth so long. But also she wants you to know that she is very much at peace. She says she can hear you and she can see you. And she's working on a system so that you will be able to have a direct communication with her as well. She's also talking about the dance that she used to love to do. And she shows me how, of course, many children do. But when she was a little girl, she used to love to uh, go on her toes and dance around. And I am sure that in a short period of time, you're going to be able to hear her because she's working on a, a way that you'll be able to have a direct contact with her. It's very important to speak to her as if she's totally alive because she is totally alive. And she says, I couldn't stay any longer. I knew I had to go. Maybe you didn't know, but I knew I had to go. And we say, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to uh, bring you the next question. This is Lupita Garcia. She is in the United States. And her question is, the spirits can hear us all the time or only on certain moments. I get that question a lot, eh? Do you, Marilyn? Yeah. I get that all the time. Yeah, what would you say? I would say that, of course, they can hear you, but they're not spying on you, right, Marilyn? I, they're not inspired. No, I was going to say the same words. <laughs> they're not watching every minute because don't forget, the spirit world is a real world. They have spirit schools and hospitals and, and laboratories and beautiful gardens. They're doing all kinds mm -hmm. of wonderful things in the spirit world. So they're not watching every little thing that we're doing. Thank you. That's a very interesting answer. And I definitely think that pro I most people have that, that doubt. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people. I get Anna, that asked a lot. Yeah. Anna Sloan, she wants to know how can I differentiate between an intuition or feeling in a message from spirit? Hmm. I mean, if you get a spirit, if you see a spirit, you will really know it's spirit. I mean, it's undoubt undoubtable. Um, or you hear a spirit. People sometimes say, oh, I'm not sure if this is from a spirit or maybe I saw something else. No, when you see, you see. When you hear a spirit, it's, 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 there's no doubt. But um, I can say that often we we receive um, our intuition or we're not aware that this is intuition and we think it's our imagination and the other way around we receive uh, imagination or, or wishes and we think it's intuition when we have a, a hint when we have a hunch you know a lot of men call it a hunch but it's like a feeling like like an inner wisdom like a tingling in your belly like a knowing within and it doesn't go away It comes back and back and back and back. And intuition will use different means in different ways and it will repeat itself. Whereas if it's, it's, if it's a wish or it's an imagination or a projection, once you stop acting upon it, it will vanish, it will go away. And the spirit uh, messages, you will certainly know when it's spirit because it's, it, it's undoubtable. Thank you for that answer. Um, the next question is uh, sent by Felipe. He has this question from Ch from Chile. He's writing. I've been told that my grandfather is my guide, the guide that accompanies me, but he is still alive. How could that be possible? Well, there can be Earth people who are guiding us. We can guide one another. And so the grandfather who is still alive, I mean, maybe his spirit, I mean, uh, he wants to help you. So that is possible. But he can be, uh, he's guiding, but he's not really the spirit guide. When we come to earth, we come with a group of spirit guides. Loved ones are not necessarily our guides. And so when you have a grandfather who's trying to guide you because he loves you, sure, he's guiding you, but he's not the basic spirit guide. Thank you for that answer. Um, the next question is from Laura, Laura Esparza. When we have dreams with deaf people and seem so real, is that a way that they come to visit us? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a message for me, please? And thank you. Laura is sending us her birthday, which is November 22nd, 1972. Who wants to answer to Laura? 
I mean, maybe both. No, you want to yeah. start mailing? You go ahead. With the dreams, I mean, the dream state is the window, you know, towards the spirit world. Uh, and a lot of the times, because they come to us and we don't pay attention, or they come to us and we're so busy, or we, we're just listening to so much outside music, and we don't go within, then they take the opportunity to come in the dreams, to come in your dream. But not all the dreams that you have with your loved ones are a spirit encounters. Sometimes it's your subconscious mind trying to make sense, you know, of, of, of an emotion you have or of a, of a, or, or a mourning that you have. Um, usually, even though I'm not an expert, and then there are so many kind of kinds of um, dreams, uh, but usually when the spirit comes in your dream, it's like around in the, towards the middle of your sleep, and it's very tangible. You know, uh, uh, their presence is strong. Their voices are clear, neat, sound, loud. Their touch is very strong. Their, their voices are clear, their, you feel their love, you feel their, their, their hug, you feel their sm smell, everything. And it stays with you for even months and years. It doesn't go away. But you can also dream with the spirit. You can dream with a loved one. And maybe your mind is trying to figure it out that they're they're dead and maybe it's it's a pro, it's another type of process and also depending on when during the night you had that dream sometimes we fall asleep and then we're awakened and then we go back to sleep for half an hour more and then is when we have the spirit encounter so that's really a big uh theme and a big issue to work with laura but um uh, and there's so many cases and so many um, types of dreams, but I can tell you, Laura, that you are very gifted yourself in the spirit. Um, as I'm very much in touch with you, I feel a lot of tears coming your way. I feel, and I also feel that this time of this anguish, this suffering, this sadness is coming to an end as we speak. I see a nice person coming your way. It is not your destiny to end up your days alone. I see a beautiful partnership for you, and I see a woman, a mother-like figure, but she's not a mother. She's more, more like, almost like an Italian nonna or a Mexican grandmother. You know that she's she's your mom's mom, a very strong, very loving, hardworking woman that is very close to you tonight. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have anything to say, Marilyn? Yeah, I just want to say that. Um, you know, when we have messages in dreams, it's it's important to find out, ask ourselves when we have the spirit, as Mikhail said, but the dreams the information will come as a universal symbol, like the sky, the earth, a culturally conditioned symbol, or it's a personal symbol. And so very often messages are given in dreams. And as Mikhail said, they come at a certain time and they come when we're at a certain brainwave frequency. And for many people, it is very um, easy to communicate with the loved ones in the dream state. So it's like learning how to, we have to learn how to raise the vibration so that we're in the subtle level, more subtle level, and they lower their frequency. So we meet at this particular brainwave frequency. And when we're at this frequency, there is a synchronicity of the left and the right brain. So it, it, it's a beautiful experience. Definitely sounds uh, as a beautiful experience and it would be great if we could practice enough to, to get there. We have reached the end of our conversation and of course before we leave we want to give you a moment both Marilyn and Mikhail to leave you your closing thoughts for the people that have been with us today. Who wants to give their closing thoughts first? Marilyn? I just want to say to everybody we are too blessed to be stressed. We have to look upward and onward and realize that we are not alone and that help is not on the way. Help is here now. Be here now. Become aware of who we are, why we've come to this earth. And even those of us who are here now, 
listening from different parts of the world. That's not an accident. Our souls knew that we would meet. And because our souls have met, we will each be giving, be getting and giving more messages. So happy spirit work and know that we are truly a family, a beautiful family that lives forever. And Marilyn, and God is in the miracle work and business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and God can do everything except fail. Yes, exactly, exactly. You know, I learned a lot from you and from Father John and your beautiful institute in Montreal. My home, my second home, and I can't wait to see you and hug you and be there with you in person. And for all our viewers, just as Marilyn said, you know, be aware that we're not alone. Be aware that you're much more than body and mind. Be aware that, this, that science is great and science is necessary, but everything cannot be measured, cannot be uh, proven, cannot be tested only merely by science. We are much more than science can tell. So learn about that. Uh, try that and, and try your own limits and limitations and you will see that spirits are always there and the spirit world is always there holding your hand and guiding your way. And one thing I want to say to everybody, when this red alert or this thing is over, I invite you to come and study with me in Montreal, free. You can stay at our beautiful center. Uh, people come for six months and you can learn all about the spirit world. But you have to be able to speak English And you have to know how to use a computer. I, I, it's a miracle I can use this little iPad. So if you have English, you have computer skills, and you want to learn about the spirit world, I open my little humble center to you, which is what Father John and I did for 40 years. And we're still welcoming people. And uh, thank God Mikael comes when, he, when there's no red alert. He comes a couple times a year. And also for those of you who speak Spanish, Mikel is doing all kinds of courses in Spanish and English as well. But learn about spirit. It's your birthright. And arise and awake. And just I want to say, God bless you all. And God bless Mindalia for the wonderful work that you're doing, Mindalia. God bless yeah. you. Yeah, God bless you. And thank you, Mindalia. Thank you again. Uh, we are we are truly grateful that you guys shared with us your time and your knowledge. Uh, to the people watching us, remember that we are Mindalia. We're an international nonprofit organization. You can collaborate with us just by liking our content, leaving us a positive message. You can share our information with someone that you think that may benefit. Follow us in our different platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channels because when you do that, you are helping us reach as much people in the planet as possible. And you are helping us create more spaces like the space we had today with Mikel Lizarralde and Marilyn Rasner. Big hug to you all and until next time, which is most likely very soon. Bye bye.